Go. Hello and welcome to uh, the Ravescope podcast. Uh, I'm Patrick Frost, the uh, editor in chief of Ravescope magazine. I'm here joined here by. Hi, I am Joseph Kimraid. I'm the managing director for Rave, uh, Ravescope. And I'm Nicole, and I'm the co-editor in chief. So yeah, no, we're um, going to be talking a bit about what's been going on over the last term. Uh, I've been extremely busy, probably too busy to say the least. I think I we can all agree think, with I that. I think we all have. I think especially every, I can only speak for second year students, but I think we've all been a little bit. Oh, slightly. With university. Uh, so the Ravescope podcast is a student-led uh, podcasting uh, service where we talk everything film, student-related film, and well, yeah, we just have fun and talk anything about you know media and film and it's, it's like also, that. yeah it's, it's also very um industry led i'd like to say that as well it really yeah. does focus on i think what's important to students who are trying to get into industry exactly um, which i think is just beneficial for every student. 100 percent, yeah i think this magazine you know its identity was really built off kind of like our passion for film and you know our, <laughs> our um, well, just our overall interest in film. Again, I'm pretty new to you know writing articles and reviews. I've done it you know briefly before, but in terms of managing uh, sort of a you could say university paper, I guess is a quite a new experience for me and a quite a new experience for all of us. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, is my article good? No, but you know, I'm giving it a go. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's good for every, the, every department in the magazine. It's good because it's you know you learn collaboration and it's and it's no one person's project. It's everyone working together for something a bit bigger, just to sound poetic. You know. But yeah, bro. I mean, I've been up to a few things over the last term. Uh, I've been up to um, we're saying that I did a we had to, I was at Target 3D virtual production the yeah. other day. I was with Gonzalo on that. Uh, you was at the Berlin Film Festival, Joe. Do you want yep. to tell us a bit about that? Uh, well, Nicole probably would know more because she was also there and um, uh, watched more films. But um, it showed like Raven's Bond students, a lot of people who were like, you know, very passionate about the whole place <laughs> and um, <laughs> were, you know, going like every single day. I know, I don't want to drop any names. Aaron was one of them. I'll do that at least because he was going to literally every film there was. But um, it was good to see. And, uh, a lot of people did get a lot of context. And I think it's a good, it's a good trip. Un- university does, the Ravensbourne University does, because it, you know, a lot of people got access to people you shouldn't be able to probably get access to. Mm. Second year film student especially as well. So I think, yeah. Um, it's good links with industry professionals as well. And it's good to see, you know, a wider range of films. I think you can possibly agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I sort of, and it was interesting to see films that like haven't even gotten a distributor yet and I've got no, like I saw a different man and that hasn't even got a trailer yet. So that was pretty interesting. It was terrible. Oh, gosh. But, um, <laughs> but like, it is interesting to see, and also it's interesting to see like people seeing a film for the first time and you're sat there with the people that are in the film and then people don't like it so that everyone's yeah. just sat in like silence yeah. and they're like, did you enjoy it? And everyone's like, and they just carry on. Cause that's yeah. what happened with them. Um, okay. Yeah. The new Hunter Schaefer one, like everyone was just like, they were like, what do you think? And everyone was just like, sat there in silence because it was pretty terrible. Yeah. 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 I'll say this though, but going back to the rave scope for a sec, I think what's good about what we're doing here is, it's very different to normal mainstream film yeah. magazines for sure, because it's more, I feel we've all tried to um, aim it for the use of students making it more career based trying to give people a platform and access to industry people which you might not get access to and i just think that should be pointed out as well because it's different it isn't just like barbie oppenheimer you know just trying to copy what you know um, what all the other main platforms do yeah so pretty much I get, I get what you mean so we're not trying to copy you know those big empire magazines or film magazines or total film where they do sort of the bigger stories more industry stories where again we're a more you know, student more sort of I, I, you could say more personal based maybe on a, for sure for raven's i think we do focus as well a lot on the students yeah a lot on what 
but no matter what year you're in, first year, second year, third year, what students are doing and really celebrate the talent which has come through. Um, a lot who we know as well. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Nicole? I think it's good because it like also shows future students uh, like what we're doing and what the uni does and it's a good advertisement for that as well. Like what kind of things you get up to when you actually get here. You know, and what you can, what industry stuff you can get involved with. Because we do, you said about the virtual productions and stuff like that. Yeah. I bet you probably wouldn't, a lot of students wouldn't know that you would get to do that. Yeah. If you didn't talk about it, you know. So exactly. It gives them a taste of like, or like students even at other universities who might think, well, what can I get involved in? And then you can be like, ah, oh, this is the thing that you can actually get involved in. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, over the last few weeks, over the last term, um, obviously I've had great opp- great opportunities through the uni. I was at the BSc Expo. That was amazing to see, see all the, sort of the new tech that, you know, big industry leaders in cinematography and cameras like Panasonic, uh, God, uh, Project Red were there, um, Blackmagic were there. And also to see sort of, you know, kind of like, industry professionals who haven't actually breached the industry as yet had, had, had sort of like little stalls where they had for example there was this guy who had this um unreal engine kind of software where it was a lot he, he programmed he made himself this kind of like you know storyboarding kind of thing it was it was really interesting kind of weird really because it was like nothing i've really seen before and like he would just you know he would just drag and drop a crane with a you know with a camera on it and everything and he could change the lighting like flipping a switch so that was really interesting. Um, obviously, I was there primarily for the virtual production aspect of things because obviously I went there for research. Um, I saw a lot of rear projection. Uh, for example, the um, uh, the Panavision um, set. Well, you could say it was actually a set. It was like this sort of like they had this sort of 1920s train setting, and behind it was a um, was like a like a sort of a moving kind of image of like a countryside in England. And obviously, they had a couple of top grade Panasonic cameras, you can change the aperture and the focus and everything like that. Yeah. That was really interesting to see how, you know, rear projection being, you know, such an old sort of form of filmmaking. I mean, going back to the early 20s and 1930s and stuff like that, sort of, you know, the sort of slapstick, sort of silent films are using rear projection a lot. See that in the modern day was really interesting. But also just the overall atmosphere was great there. Was it, was it sort of like networking? Wow. It was, yeah. I got a load of contacts, especially from um, again, uh, previs, a lot of previs sort of artists and virtual artists as well, which was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the place was massive. I don't. I, again, I don't know really where to start in terms of you know, talking from, you know, the sort of the smaller places and the sort of the bigger brands as well. It was interesting to see how drastically, you know. Like for example, the Panavision Red Project Red section was like yeah, yeah. St- top of the art. But again, these sort of smaller kind of these smaller companies were doing the same thing, but are kind of a lower budget. So seeing yeah, that kind yeah. of you know, pl- seeing those kind of people apply the same method in a sort of smaller and like cost-effective way was really again was how should I say it was kind of like encouraging for you know say like a young yeah, filmmaker for sure, yeah, yeah, for sure yeah. to see that you know. It, just give me a few years, maybe I could get the training as well. Maybe I could get. To well, I feel like Raymond's born's really good with that as well because I mean, even like the rain dance uh, networking thing, which happened um, what was it last week, I think, um, and that was like a big one. You know, is I mean, it's, if it's organised by rain dance, you're getting people going out. It's yeah. like a big global, well, at least in the UK, at least big thing. We just got like free entry. You know, having um, the director as well of. Uh, to walk a space to do a talk as well. He was great, Elliot Grove. Yeah, he was he was really good. He was, he was eccentric to say the least, but very. I know he's Canadian, I think, but very <laughs> very American in his, in his Canadian way. It was, um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of advice and stuff. Really, kind of inspirational as well. I mean, some of the things he said in terms of being. Uh, yeah, even in terms of just like making a film like, a, like each weekend and just like trying to get, you know us to like really push ourselves in terms of just filmmaking. Oh, 100%. And I mean, like the whole sort of how he applied, I don't know, how he applied sort of the parables of 
like the old Bible to us being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, in a way, I had to re, I had to rehear that in a way. But again, it kind of made sense when back then all these sort of nat- natural disasters and wars were going on, and like that, and, and like these sort of storytellers of old try to tell their sort of you know people of their village, like try to sort of calm them down through story and make yeah, them understand yeah. it more. Yeah. I guess you know, I guess how he applied it to modern day. That that was interesting take for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shall we cut that? <laughs>